Welcome to PlayPianoToday.com. This is a quick overview from the piano lesson series titled Tension and Release, Chapter 2. Today we're going to look at a technique that is very simple to do, but it will instantly give depth and richness to your chords. This being the second chapter of the series titled Tension and Release, it has to do with introducing something called dissonance into your chords. Dissonance is like musical stress, and again, like I said in the first chapter, that sounds bad, but it's not. For example, here's some musical stress, which out of context may sound kind of strange until you hear it resolve. Listen to this. I'm going to give you something very similar. I'm just going to move it down a couple inversions. Now, I could just be playing a straight F chord, an F triad, and that's nice. But if I anticipate it by another chord that introduces musical tension and then it releases, all of a sudden you've got some depth to your music. I'm going to show you a real specific way to do this. It's actually very, very simple. And you'll be able to do this right away. Let's dig into it. For an example's sake, I'm going to take a song that you probably will hear many times in your life at weddings. Sounds like this. It's the chord progression from Pachelbel's Canon, written long ago. Now in just a moment, we're going to take those same original chords and we'll introduce musical tension or musical stress. And remember, that's a great thing, and you'll see how it really brings it to life. But just for comparison, here's the original chords. I'm playing it in the key of C. And the chord progression is one, the one chord, right? The five chord, the six chord, the three chord, the four chord, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Okay, now I'm playing it very simply now. Now just a quick note, if you don't understand what the one chord is, or the three chord is, or the six chord, those kind of things, you need to go through pattern, piano, and keyboard. That will start you from the ground up, get you running, and get you up to speed quickly so that you can play any song by ear. If you haven't yet done that, head over to playpianotoday.com. That's the first course listed on our website. Uh, hundreds of thousands of students have gone through that and really found a new love for playing completely free from sheet music. So that's my little spiel, but it's an important one because it builds a foundation. All right, let's jump into the fray now by adding some musical tension, which again sounds terrible, but remember tension and release creates movement and interest. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to talk to you about something that we also went over in pattern, piano, and keyboard, and that's the concept of inversions. It's a very simple concept. To invert a chord, as you know, means to take the bottom note and flip it up on top. So I'm going to take the C major chord, and I'm going to take that C and instead play it there, leaving the other two notes in place. That's the first inversion. Now, this would go off the screen, but if I did it again, took that middle note and put it up on top, that would be the second inversion. You can keep doing that all the way up the keyboard. So I'm inverting chords. They become really handy when you use inversions to make smooth chord movements. For instance, and this is all a preface to doing tension and release in this lesson, but for instance, if you go from C to G, your hand has to hop quite a bit, right? And I'm going to add the left hand here for a little more fullness. But what if I used an inversion of G? So instead of going down to the normal root position of G, what if I used an inversion that would be like this? Look, my right hand is barely moving. 
And if you look where I'm going, B, D, and G, those are the same notes. Let's take that top note and put it down on the bottom. Those are the same notes as the regular root position G major triad. I've just taken the bottom note and flipped it up on top. So I'm still going between C and G. I'm just using an inversion. Okay, so you're going to see me doing that a lot in this technique of using delay and anticipation to introduce tension and release. Okay, having said all that, now we're just going to study the very first two chords of Pachelbel's Canon, which are C major and G major. Okay, so if I use the technique of using an inversion, it would sound like this, which is nice, but we're not always after nice, right? <laughs> we're after interesting. Sometimes music can be a little too white bread nice, and then it's just nothing but obnoxious. So we're going to introduce some tension and release. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue going the same speed with my left hand. But my right hand is going to be delayed because this is just a quick overview of the full lesson. We're going to jump ahead to the section where I'm showing an example of what it sounds like once you put it together and use the right hand to really introduce tension and release into these chords. In the upcoming example, I'll do exactly what we just looked at, delaying that right hand for every single chord so that every time you get to a new chord, it introduces the musical stress and your ear really perks up. But you know what? We're also going to study some additional things in this lesson. We're going to study also some single and double note slides. I'll throw that in as well. And we'll study some funky left hand techniques. So I'll throw that in as well. And I know by doing all this, it really pulls Pachelbel's Canon and blows it out of the wedding music genre, but it's fun to play. And I want to show you how simple this is to really add some life to almost any chord progression that you want to play. Here it is. Nice and funky. Isn't that amazing how that simple technique of...